Okay, so this is it. Dream Engines Nomad Cities. This did officially release this week, so we can find it on Steam and probably other places, but I know for sure it's up on Steam. And just to let you know, I, the key was given to me by the devs. Um, they approached me about it, and I said, sure, why not? Let's take a look at it. It uh, looks interesting. So, is that too loud for the music? It sounds like it is. I see everyone had it turned down. How's that too low? Oh gosh, should be good. Okay, so load game as I was just trying stuff out. So, new game. So, you have different difficulties that you can do? Or is it not? This is situations. Your tribe. So, got to start with this one. So, this has kind of got like a, a roguelike uh, element to it, I guess. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, junk lords. Junk lords are the masters of scrap, where other tribes are only old world. Where other tribes see only old war gar old world garbage and unexceptional blue boxes, they see treasure. Their experience in finding and making use of every little piece of scrap proves they're useful in restoring and maintaining an ancient nomad city. So we get a bonus to uh, build costs, or sorry, reduction in build costs. Debris and ruins uh, get fifty percent more of that, and demolish refund is plus fifteen percent. And stuff. So we are still learning. Iron Man, no. Survival beginner. Forgiving, blah, blah, blah. So you get lots of settings here. You can make the different size maps too. 220 seems right in the middle. And of course, we want the tutorial. So, yes. And city name. Very appropriate, I think. Oh, yeah, story time. Twist, once a world of wonders and dreams, now a place of nightmares. With the discovery of the reality-defying technology known as Dream Tech, Twist became the home of many great and prosperous empires. At least that's what the legends say. Then came the Dream Plagues. No one knows where they came from. Creatures that seem to come straight out of a nightmare. They appeared everywhere, and the world was not prepared. The Twistons uh, fought bravely, but the dream plagues were endless and relentless. Great cities fell, empires were decimated. Centuries later, Twist itself became a dark and twisted planet. The few remaining Twistons survived as nomadic tribes, never putting down roots, never remaining in the same place for too long, always on the move before the dream plagues catched their scent. Ta -da. Flying cities must have their ups and downs. You would think so. But I bet they go sideways too sometimes. No. Oh, AD keys to cycle through tips. Got all the tips. 49 tips. We're good. Archaeologist Wallace. Overseer. That's amazing. A true marvel of the ancients. They called it a nomad city and it can fly. Uh, we don't know why they abandoned it. Everything appears to be working. Chief Scientist Murray. Overseer, the city has an avatar. It's a mechanical giant that they called it... And they called it Tiny. Some kind of ancient joke, perhaps. It's armed. We can use it to explore our surroundings, find resources, and fight the dream plagues. Advisor Han. Our luck could be changing. We can build a real home here, one that we can take with us wherever we were for forced to flee. Into the overseer chamber in the city core. From here, you can control Tiny and the entire city. You can feel this, and this is only the beginning of your journey. Great hardships await, but also a new hope. You start to acquaint yourself with Tiny's controls and dream of building a grand city, like the days of old. Objectives. Complete tutorial below. Reach a population of 21. So welcome. Tutorial guide. It's only a, this is only a guide and does not affect the game, so you can still lose if your city gets destroyed during the tutorial. Follow the instructions in the top right area. So, so this is tiny. Navigating the tutorial. However, the video icon above. Oh yeah, these things. So this is kind of cool. Next, you put little videos to help you uh, figure stuff out or to explain stuff a little bit. Pause and unpause the game. Oh, that would be the space bar. 
Now we're here, control tiny. Move around, change zoom, rotate the camera. How far can you go about that far? Combat mode is used for when exploring the map and for fighting enemies. Management mode is used for building and managing your city. Press tab to switch between modes and open the management uh, mode. Switch to management mode. Tab. Okay. To increase the city's population, build some houses for your workers to live in. Select the house button from the build menu and then click on the map to place them. So watching the video kind of gives you a hint on where you should place these houses. <laughs> I found that out pretty quick. Because you got to remember this is a it's a production game too so you have to set up your production lines which means you know rails so doesn't really yeah, he's stuck there get out of the way tiny Let's go this way right, they don't tell this here but they should have hitting f lets you to, allows you to move the camera around without moving tiny because the game is paused so the question is where do you want to build houses we need to do two of them you're going to want space, <laughs> you know, around for for the, the rails and whatever. Again, look at the video to give you an idea. So what we'll do is, um, I guess it doesn't matter. There and there. Is that what they did? Somewhat, kind of. Yeah, we'll just try to mimic that for now. No, uh -oh. Rocket just woke up from his nap and realized Mrs. Gimpy's not here. Okay, automated delivery. Houses need a constant supply of food. Resources and dream engines are transported via an automated rail system that works like conveyor belts. To build rails, blah, blah, blah. So basically just do that. Watch the little video. Then run the rails to where you want to go. And building sends or receives resources from access points. Drag rails to and from buildings to create stuff. So creating an output to send food from the city core. <coughs> Excuse me. So over here, the rail. That. And then you have to tell it to go into the houses. Like that and outside of that. And you pick what, what's going on in this particular conveyor belt. In this case, we want food. Sorry, I had to cough. Okay, so uh, connect the rails and deliver food to both houses. So that means just unpause. Here's tiny, there's the food coming out. So that's the end of the line, but that's all good there. Well done, you received the final rewards 20 planks. Okay, before you explore the dangerous surroundings and the search of additional resources, you should equip, equip some repair kits in case Tiny takes damage. The repair, kit, the repair kits are the city's, are in the city core. To open the building window, left-click on it in the management mode. So, management mode there. Transferring items. Blah. Hold shift and click on the repair kits stuff. So, repair kits are those things. So, you can either click them one at a time. Where you hit shift and take them all. So now we do. And then assign the repair kit to the quick bar. So in this case, it's how do we do that? Oh, you have to unpause. Right? And the button? No. How do we do this? I forget how we did this. Character window. Assigning to the quick bar. Click on one of the empty quick bar slots in the character area and then choose the item you wish to assign to that slot. So, five. There. Works for me. So now we have repair kits to use, if we need them. While exploring, you will encounter the Dream Plagues. Drop. Uh, Tiny is equipped with replaceable weapons, uh, one ranged and one melee with which it can defend against these hostile creatures. 
Use the left mouse button for melee and right for ranged. Press and hold attack continuously and don't forget to press tab to switch to combat mode. So. Something else. So you just move around, spin, zoom out a little bit. Oh, these are resources. Those aren't, though. Continue. It's time to collect some resources. Explore the area around the city that is marked on your mini-map and search for a blood, Bloodwood resource node. To build a harvester, switch to management mode, click on the resource to open its window, and then click on the Bloodwood cutter button. Find a Bloodwood resource patch to build a cutter. This looks like... Do you think that's Bloodwood? I don't know. This is a Bloodwood node, so we found it. So now we need a cutter. So a cutter would be... Up again, there's a farm, there's a cutter. Must be built on a Bloodwood node. Oh, it's got to be built on the node. There we go. Now you now collect, you're now collecting logs, but before you can use them, they need to be refined into planks and transferred to storage. Logs and other raw materials cannot be taken with you when you fly away with refined, while refined materials can. While refined materials can. Planks are produced from logs at a wood warper. Wood warpers need to be within your power area, so it's better to build near the city. In management mode, press space to pause the game F to move the camera around. So we need to uh, build a wood warper and three times three and supply them with logs. It's a wood cutter. It's a farm. There's a wood warper. So the so the red area can't build here because it's not within power range. You could build it on the city if you want. Or you can build it just outside the platform. This is the platform area. This is the gray area is outside of the platform, but within power. Red is off the city, or outside of the city, and off the power grid. You can increase the power grid, though, the range. So the question is, do you want to? Could just keep these here. Because I have a feeling I'm going to need some of these, right? So build the warper times three and supply them with logs. So this way, now we do this. This stuff doesn't require power, so you just run this this way. There, and go. See? Automation. And while that's happening, we'll just go... Oh, look, there's more. Bad guys. Again, as you can see, you can run around, collect uh, resources, kill bad guys. Now, we could use this to collect the wood faster, too. Wasn't expecting this game to look uh, steampunkish, but it is ish. What were you expecting? Worry about that later. So, is the wood being delivered yet? That's just taking the time. So, okay, so it's done. It would uh, now build a small. Some rails to send planks from the warpers into your city core for storage. Then wait for some planks to be produced. So now we have to connect these to the storage. So now we need more rails. Do 
can do that. Oh, I guess it doesn't really matter how close that stuff is, does it? The premise reminds me of, uh, what is it called? Sunless Skies. Oh. I expect something more sci-fi, but this is interesting too. Well, it's kind of sci-fi-ish. I mean, we do have a robot. Well done, you receive the following rewards. 15 planks. Okay, as you explore, keep your eye out for additional resource nodes. Uh, once a resource node is depleted, it will produce at a reduced speed, and you may want to connect more nodes. Now, increase your city's population level to unlock some more buildings. To increase your city level, you need to increase your population. You can see the progress in the HUD at the top of the screen. Supply food for three houses. Reach a population of 21. So, threat level zero. Weight. Engine fuel. The camp. So, next level is outpost. Current population 20. Needed for next level is 21. So, I need another house. Here's a house. Let's do that. Need food. Oh, there we go. City, uh, new city level. So, in order to be more efficient in exploring, gathering, and defending your city, you'll need better equipment. Before you can craft new re weapons or armor, you'll have to perform some research. More on that later. But you can already craft some more repair kits. Press C to open the crafting window, then select the repair kit and click the craft button. You may need to get uh, more, some more planks first. Let's see. How many am I supposed to craft? Just one. Look, we already did it. So continue. Food production, farming. You should see uh, to your food supplies next. They won't last forever. First step in food production is growing your raw food. A few per per potato, per potato farms <laughs> should do the trick. You will find them under the gathering category. You can expand your power area by building Tesla towers from the power category. Build a Tesla tower. Tesla tower. So what are they saying we're supposed to build this stuff? Oh, got to extend our area. <coughs> our, build, our electrical area, right? Power stuff, whatever. But where? Seem to have more, a little bit more room that way. So we'll go this way. Oh, look at that range. Can't really zoom out that far. But we'll bid you. No, no power access. Build a tower to... Build tower stuff to extend your range. So that's... So it's got to be within the gray area. Okay, fine. There. Oh, and then... Okay, so you chain it along. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Build a per, per, per potato farms near the city. Per potato. Stone worker, food plant. Per potato farm. Grows for potatoes for eating. So, we could utilize this uh, little conveyor belt. No, wait a minute, it's going to send it there. So, they want their own little area, I think. So. No? Unlike building, yes. I don't think I built. Build. I've got to build three of these. There we go. 
next. Okay, for food production processing. Now build a food plant and set it up set up rails to transport potatoes to the farm, then send the produced food to the city core storage. As your population grows, you will need to produce more food, and you can build more farms for the food plant to reach fuel full efficiency. You can see input and output amount per cycle and the production UI when expecting the, with the buildings. So build a food plant, supply the food plant with pot per potatoes, and send the food to storage. So look, it's a movie. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> That's kind of what I was going to do. Warp changer, stone, food plant. So have you there? That'll work. And this stuff. Go there. Go there. There. Oh, look at the little connection line. Food plant to process food from plants. Sounds like a commercial, doesn't it? So now we're producing the food that's going to feed our people and keep them happy. Maybe. But what if it processes plants from food? I think you guys just aren't getting the purple potato joke. Look, we're done. Well done, you received the following rewards. 15 food, but we're just producing food now. To keep the city running, you will need more than food and wood. You also need to produce enough power and flux. Some flux is produced in houses, but higher amounts require flux fats. Build some of them outside your city. Their most basic production recipe doesn't require any raw materials, so don't worry about where you just put them. Or where you put them. Power is not required to build new buildings, but it is essential to, uh, to operating existing ones. Make sure your power production is always positive. You can produce power at the power generator. Like Flux, it must, its most basic recipe does not require any raw materials, but these cannot be built too close to each other. So we need three Flux vats near the city. Flux vats. Down farm. Featherstone miner. Wood thingy, stone worker, food plant, flux vats. So, some flux produced in houses, but higher amounts of flux require vats. Build some of these outside your city, so around here, right? I guess you probably should look at the movie. a guest ride, I think, being close to the houses, right? Because it said the houses produce them. Okay, power is not required. Build power generators near the city as well. Power generator. This can't be built too close to other generators. So where they put it just out that way. Okay. No ta no power access. Build test let thing. So over here then. There we go. 
Okay, you're almost ready to start exploring on your own. Before that, you should understand the core concept of building inside or outside your city. Since your city can fly, there are advantages to building inside it. You can take you can take these buildings with you. Space is limited, however, and while you can later expand your city area and maximum weight, you'll need to prioritize what you build within it. Most of the basic buildings are cheap and take up a lot of space, which makes them a better fit to be built outside and scrap before you leave. In the long run, however, you will want to be able to take more and more of your industry with you when you fly away. So some more expensive buildings or upgraded versions of the basic ones should be built inside the city. Luckily, most buildings can be moved around. To move a building, press M in management mode and then click the building you want to move and place it in a new position. Move a building. Um, what building should we move? Does it matter? The Fox Fats. So what's the purpose of these guys anyway? Um, rotate building, right click to exit build. So look, you can spit it around. Ta da. And tutorial, good job. This is the end of the, tor of the tor tutorial. These were just the basic uh, controls. There's much more of you to learn for you to learn. Additional features and mechanics such as researching, defending your city, flying away, and infrastructure upgrades will be explained when you encounter them. Your first goal should be to grow your population to unlock the research tab. The final goal of the game is to find a way to establish a permanent settlement. Collect as many resources as you can of as you can refine and be prepared to fly away before the dream plagues overwhelm your defenses. If you have any feedback, please use the send feedback button. Blah, blah, blah. What if a process is... No, we already went over that. Okay, so. Dream archives. When you unlock new options, you can see information. We're off to a good start, Overseer. I don't remember ever seeing our people so excited. We can build something truly great here, but we'll need to do our own research if we're to grow and defend the city. The city's infrastructure is in relatively good condition, but it's old. Ancient, really. Perhaps we can uh, research our workshop for producing parts that can be used to upgrade our, that infrastructure. Objectives. Reach a population of 30. Research wor workshop. Perp chips the f with fish somehow seems weird. Not that the fish are weird, are purple as well. When you unlock new options, you can see information, blah, 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 blah. press A. Yeah each that. So, you need a population of 30, so that's a lot of houses. A lot of people to feed. So, let's get started. So, house, house, house. That way. Go there. Go there. Go there. That's a whopping six population, right? Actually, how many people in a house? Oh, it looks like we have potential for 40. The house. Maintenance of one, upkeep of one power. Stores the resource we call people. Increased work capacity requires a regular supply of food. It doesn't tell you how many people it supplies. Ah, storage capacity is five. So we just added ten more. Someone tried perp chips and seagulls, and the seagulls ate the chips. So this is producing our food, which goes in here. How much storage how much food do we have in storage? 189. And there it goes. I'm guessing they're happy. Reach a population of 30. Hey, we're at 30. New city level, village. Okay, your population now allows you to build your research labs. Build labs to research technologies, unlock new buildings, equipment, and other bonuses. Press R to open the research re resource screen and select technolo technologies to research. 
For labs to produce knowledge, make sure you regularly supply them with the required materials as shown in the production widget when interacting with the lab. Is that the kind of skybird skybird is? A seagull? No. It puts the food in tins. That's uncanny. No, it's not. Anyway. Oh yeah, research. Not from here though. Research screen screen. Okay, so each subject has a cost of knowledge points and elements that are unlocked by completing this research, or hover your mouse over that unlocks to learn more about them. Research screen. Click any research blah blah blah. blah. Shift click to add additional subjects to the end of the queue. Once a research goal is selected, labs will start producing knowledge. Knowledge points will be assigned, so stuff. Oh look at the tree. That's a fairly large tree. Okay then, so, um, workshop, drip process and flux. The basis of uh, all dream tech, this substance is extracted from the uh, dream realm and can warp reality to make unphysical things happen. This is a global resource and does not require transportation. Crystal miner. Production recipe. So, uh, feather crystals. Feather crystals. And starwood. Refining. Starstruck tar infused in bloodwood planks. Make them sturdier and add some really reality bending properties produced at the wood warper from bloodwood planks and star stuck star stuck tar. Maintenance upkeep stuff. Hmm. That's ten points. So I guess we go with that one first. And then we'll go with uh I guess we're gonna use star tar. No oh, Star Wars repair kit. Star power or tar power. Drip processing. I guess we'll go with 15 next. Crystal miner or workshop. Let's go workshop after that. And we'll see where we are after that. Star studded tar. Did we liberate it from someone? Maybe. Or maybe they're still stuck in it. Oh, I need to research lab. So there's our tar extractor. That's a miner. Wood worker, stone worker, new plant, flux vats, defense, yeah, turrets, walls, gates, miscellaneous. So we don't have the research thing because, or the research lab because. Rockets here. It's the farm. Here's our research lab. So, where do we want to build you? Let's put you there for now. Insufficient resources. What do we need? Oh, we need more planks. We need one more plank. I think we'll get that, uh, like, right now. Ta -da. So what do you need? Supply research lab with resources. So what does it need? Resource lab needs, I don't know. This building is missing raw resource or materials required for production. So knowledge. So we need flux and star stuck tar. So we need to do tar production. Tar. 
tar extractor. So we need to find tar. Okay, Tiny, let's go find some tar. I don't know what tar looks like, so at least in this game. Leave me alone. I didn't do anything to you. I don't think that was hard. Infrastructure upgrade available. See tooltip from above minimap. Infrastructure upgrade, upgrade available. When you have enough materials for an infrastructure upgrade, press K to open the infrastructure screen and purchase an upgrade, then spend the upgrade points. This is the infrastructure window. When you here you can use upgrade materials to upgrade your infrastructure and receive permanent benefits. Click the upgrade button to purchase upgrade points. You can then click the different areas of your infrastructure to upgrade them. Each level of an infrastructure area provides passive bonuses. Once upgraded, you can allocate additional points to special perks under the different areas. These provide more specialized bonuses and abilities. So, infrastructure level zero. Upgrade. We have unass one assigned point. One unassigned point. So offense, damage plus 5%, survival. So max health increased by 5%. Defensive buildings, max health plus 3%. Gathering. Bonuses per level. Refining production speed plus 5%. Harvesting production speed plus 5%. And loot amount plus 2.5%. Administration. Bonuses per level. Flux production, production speed plus 5%, power production speed plus 5%. I'm going to go with gathering. Leave me alone. I guess I should heal, huh? So I've got them, might as well use them. Industrial ruins. You press E. Inventory. <clears throat> ruins. These ancient ruins have uh, some machinery machinery that is still partially functional. With the right materials, you may be able to produce something, to, uh, but you can only activate it a few times before it becomes unusual. Unusable. Alternatively, you could scrap the whole place for whatever resources you can find. Craft. Charges remaining one. Scrap it. Um, craft. Just a little over an hour. Okay, so special. Refined tar blueprint. Featherstone flux blueprint. Uh, refined tar? Featherstone to flux. Oh, turn the stone probably to flux. Can we do that? No. Now we need old world scraps. So how's this going to work? So I can't get any of this stuff, it looks like. Nothing's craftable. So this is the, what's the charge? Oh, applied automatically. Refined blueprint. No. I don't think this is going to... Hmm. Do you need to scrap places like this to get the old world scrap? I guess. I don't know. See, charges remaining one. I 
don't know what this actually means. Serial sounded like after the charge it becomes usable. Unusable. I don't know. Right now I need to find some tar. Hey, they shoot back. Okay, tar. And it's our wood production there, plank production. stuff. So where do I find the tar? This is too quiet. There. Eh, now that's too loud. <laughs> okay, let's see how that works. So is this stuff tar? No, it's not tar. I can't get to it. So what's the tar actually look like? Don't know. Small wood. New tribe unlocked, the plague hunters. So do stuff. I can aim, sort of. I think that the tar is hanging around on the surface. You've never been to Los Angeles, have you? We literally have tar pits in Los Angeles. Can I spoil just slightly? No. Gotta figure it out. Stuff over here. Now, is the. You would think we'd be able to find tar since it's a basic resource, right? Tar extractor. Extract Star Trek. Star stuck tar from the soil under the city. Oh, helps to read stuff. That was going to be a spoiler? So basically, what you're going to say is RTFM. 
Now we just have to get set up a little production line, right? Yeah, I would do it from down here, I guess. Oh, now it's loud. Okay, so what I needed, I need. If I want more tar, we need more crushed feather stone, which is stuff I'm guessing pick up out there somewhere. The miner. So the feather stone miner. Production recipes stuff. Basis of all dream tech. The substance is extracted from the dream realm and can warp reality to make unphysical things happen. This is a global resource and does not require transportation, so... Must be built on Featherstone Node. Sure. In the meantime... So now we have to go find a Featherstone Node. I was being cautious because a streamer was playing Final Fantasy VI and was wondering why a spellcaster was dying so easy to physical attacks. In the manual, it mentions that if the character is in the back row, the damage is halved. Well, you always put your spellcasters in the back row. You don't put them in the front row. That's like a staple of RPGs. Unless you want them to die, I guess. Here's a Featherstone, though. So that was easy enough to find. You never got angry for you pointing that out from the manual. Yeah, well, some guys are jerks about it. <laughs> it's not your fault he's uh, new to the genre or anything. <laughs> Call them stupid and unappreciative. Come on, you pansy, get back in there and fight. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? That's nah, not a mess. Okay, Tiny. What else can we see out here? Hey, bag of water. It is time to take a break. What? Go stretch your legs. Your next break snakes. is in one hour. Just to clear up, I appreciate Skybird asking me ahead of time whether he, want, he wanted to give me a, whether I wanted a spoiler or not. Because most people don't ask, they just say it. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Okay, so, break time. Hey, look, we're feeding this stuff. Oh, do we have enough to build one of these, uh, another one of these to speed up stuff? This is a tar extractor. So we rotate these. Insufficient resources. What do you miss? Oh, need more feather stones still. So we're waiting for this stuff to go in. Insufficient. This building is missing raw materials required for production. So I guess we should probably build a little 
one of these to connect to you. Oh, what do you want though? Guess we should check first. Research lab wants, um, what does he want? It was paid off when you had to fight a giant with massive counterattacks. Everybody was in the back row then. <laughs> Oh, so start. Unlock new production recipes through research, CD upgrades, and ex exploration. And workers assigned. Output. Knowledge. So you need. Oh, tar. We don't have any tar yet. We should have tar now, though. No. Inventory. Planks. Juice. Just. Live wire and repair kit. So we're not sending tar in it into this? Or this this is tar. There's the output, the tar. Or is this not go into storage? Stream that it says an origin blah blah blah. Can't be extracted by special means. Build a tar extractor anywhere in the city. This resource is too heavy or unstable to carry with the flying refinery. Before taking off it will be removed. I have a feeling we're supposed to put this directly into that. Just to guess. Because this doesn't seem to be going into storage here. Oh, now it is. I don't want to put it in my inventory. But... Did I not build this connector correctly? There we go. Problem solved, I think. Problem solved. Okay, time to take a break. <laughs> Gonna get up, stretch my legs, get some water, that kind of thing. I will be back in a few minutes to continue on with the learning this. Thank you all very much for watching. Enjoy the dog video. <laughs>